Overwatch 2 PvE mode has been canceled. The Overwatch 2 update from the dev chat that they had is that the original PvE campaign mode, whatever, that would be its own fleshed out experience is canceled. The talent trees are scrapped. There's no standalone version that you can engage with. It's just going to be exactly the same as the Overwatch 1 events were as part of the live service experience. The PvP mode is still going to be pretty much the only fleshed out and in the only cared for part of the game and live service on the part of the devs. The whole point of Blizzard making Overwatch 2 is just completely, uh, it's completely moot. I'm not a dev, but I know tons of ideas and products get scrapped behind the scenes without public knowledge. That's absolutely true. A lot of the times during projects, not just for gaming, but for, for, for all these different types of creative projects. There's always stuff that is on the cutting room floor that never sees the light of day. And often we never really knew about, we never really knew it was ever being worked on in the first place. So it kind of doesn't matter as much. But in this case, Blizzard talked tons of game about the PVE mode of Overwatch 2 and that it was essentially the entire reason they were moving over to Overwatch 2 and forcing everybody to go play Overwatch 2 and download Overwatch 2 even though you know some of us actually paid money for the base game of Overwatch 1 in the first place and now the entire game is just free. I mean if you over promise and under deliver people are going to be disappointed and that's absolutely true and it seems like for most of these triple A huge developers their whole mo is to over promise and under deliver which what you should be doing is under promising and over delivering every time and that's something that you can take all the way to the bank in your personal life if you're watching it never fails over promising under delivering the whole thing is that you're setting expectations right so if you set expectations too high it actually doesn't even matter if the final product is good you over blew the expectations so much that it was going to be impossible for anyone to be satisfied. And here again, we have a AAA developer that that has done it to a spectacular degree with Overwatch 2. The Krusty Krab 2 thing, it's the most apt comparison you could possibly come up with. So to quietly cancel the only thing that was going to be different about overwatch 2 as compared to overwatch 1 i don't want to say it's unforgivable but it's it's ah. i just don't think they had enough resources to get it out in time so the business strategy now is to prioritize the live service game they've been prioritizing the live service game since it came out in like 2016 or whenever the fuck we're tired of developers prioritizing the live services of these games zelda jedi survivor I don't know about Hogwarts, I think you see, but there's, a, you know, Elden Ring, all the many examples. They're all hitting great sales numbers and, and people are loving those games, critically acclaimed games. And those games don't have uh, live service elements. They're not riddled with microtransactions. They don't have PVP and multiplayer and they're doing just fine. Games do not have to have a live service component to be viable in the market or be enjoyable. To be clear, there's still PVE. It's just gonna be packaged differently with continual smaller content drops alongside the PVP season, which is exactly how Overwatch 1 was. The events in Overwatch 1, some of them later on had PVE elements. Those were very fun. It was not its own real mode that you could play all the time. This stuff is what was chiefly cut out of the PVE experience. That's not to say other things aren't going to get cut and that the PVE experience isn't going to be neutered further. But if something like a persistent talent tree is cut, that probably means that the complexity, the robustness, the detail, the persistence of the PVE mode across your play sessions is going to be significantly reduced. Maybe there won't even be progress that is tracked you know i don't know if you're gonna still have levels to the characters how much your consistent play sessions 
over time are going to matter in terms of progression. But to remove this big part of the progression system will certainly make the replayability factor of PvE far lower, but it'll make the co-op less interesting and fun because now people won't be specking into different talent trees with different abilities and things like that. Obviously, something like talent trees create a ton of complexity in the gameplay experience, a ton more variables to QA test, to polish, to figure out in terms of balancing, and obviously that would put a lot more strain on the development team to fully make sure it works, it's fun and good for the game. I understand why something like this would be one of the first things on the chopping block if they're running into constraints. But to have a feature like this get cut, it is very disappointing, especially when, you know, like I said, these things were touted as being features of Overwatch 2 and these new modes. They got announced, they got mocked up, and now they're going to cut it. They just should never have shown it off. They shouldn't have shown these things off if they weren't sure they could deliver. I do understand why they do it. It's marketing. It's all marketing. It's generating hype. It's overhyping. It's overpromising. And they think that's going to get people excited, get people want to play the game, and buy more skins, blah, 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 whatever, invest their time. But it actually just disappoints people. It turns people off. It makes people not want to engage at all. It just shows them instead that you know maybe they can't trust and take your word at face value when you promise new features and things like that to be implemented in the game allegedly there's still going to be story-based events which we already had in overwatch one it had a story arc that it followed that's not going to be new co-op features canon and not canon i assume that means that like in overwatch one it had co-op pve where only certain characters would be able to play in the same lobby together because canonically that event was taking place where only these certain characters were around in that point in the story and they would have been the ones interacting with each other and you know not having uh, people from like talon uh, on the same team as the overwatch characters in a co-op event uh, that would be like not immersive it wouldn't make sense in the canon but is it a forever mode or is it just some five minute game mode where it takes place for only one week of an event every once a year? By the way, this is exactly my problem with Overwatch 1. I loved the PvE stuff, but it would only be around for a week every once in a while, very inconsistently. And it just wasn't worth, it wasn't even worth returning to the game, reinstalling the game, patching the game, whatever, just to play the, the PvE for five minutes, complete it, and then there's no reason to do it again because there's no carried on progression, there's no, there's just nothing that makes you want to replay it and keep experiencing it. Then you have Jason Schreier, who's a reporter. Anytime these guys weigh in, usually not a vibe, but... Uh, you know, he essentially says that we should be cutting Blizzard some slack and that we need to empathize with the employees of the company, even though we, we have the right to be mad at the executives of Activision and Blizzard for mismanaging this, for overhyping this, for overblowing this in marketing and announcing things too soon, which largely those things end up falling on their shoulders of decision making, not, you know, some random QA tester, some random programmer down in the trenches of blizzard actually making the stuff we need to be empathetic towards that we need to not just be going and witch hunting and hating on and death threatening you know employees of the company that have really nothing to do with those higher level decisions that we're frustrated with and they're also not the ones who decided to cut the content entirely either i absolutely agree don't hate mob the the small guys don't hate mob you know the random crew members like the, the problem lies in the management. Your job is your job, blah, blah, blah. I get all these things. Blizzard does not seem like it's been a very cool place to work for a hot minute. Many scandals and accusations over the years. And I also doubt the company culture is a great vibe, even if you aren't a woman in that company. Don't quote me on this, but I feel like they've even laid off a bunch of employees recently. If you're still working for Blizzard, man, like, and this stuff bothers you, if the worst part about working at Blizzard is people tweeting badly about your company and spouting hate online, uh, maybe your priorities are not straight. I think that you should potentially seek other employment if working at Blizzard is this much of a mental boom kind of poison for you. Uh, I, I, it does not seem like a great place to work. And frankly, 
honestly, truthfully, with all due respect, the quality of work that has been coming from uh, Blizzard as of late is nothing to write home about. You know, Overwatch 2 is nothing to write home about. In fact, it really just seems like a cash grab to trick people into paying more money for skins and changing the skin system. Diablo 4 has been fun as far as how launch is gonna go. I'm not hopeful. Diablo 3's launch was absolutely horrific. I saw no auction house in Diablo 4 when I played the beta, but they could always surprise you. I didn't see any pay to win mechanics, but they could always surprise you. Blizzard is unfortunately at the point where they have speed ran losing players trust the fastest. Blizzard at a time was known just a couple years ago for only ever coming out with the most polished, finished, amazing games on a consistent basis. You know, even if something like Diablo 3 wasn't your cup of tea because it was kind of more of a different game mechanically than like Diablo 2, that they were just known for a certain level of quality, a certain standard. World of Warcraft revolutionized MMOs forever. They were known as the GOATs in a lot of categories. StarCraft, an amazing RTS, most would call it the greatest RTS ever made. Like, that's just the way it was. And then all of a sudden, Blizzard just, just mental boomed, bro. Like, they just, they just went off the rails at some point, and now we're here. Games journalists, of all people, having to be apologists on the part of Blizzard for coming out with garbage trash, tricking their player bases that have one, that, that had so much trust in them. What, don't you have phones, guys? What, don't you want to play the Chinese knockoff version of Diablo on your phones and spend thousands of dollars on microtransactions? Come on, guys. Are we taking advantage of your trust right now, maybe? Are we kind of a little bit taking advantage of our of the trust we built up with you over 20 years? Pro yes, absolutely that's what's happening. I know you're saying you mean it just as people, the workmen in this scenario, but I think they can take it. I think they've been through worse at this point, you know, with working at Blizzard. And I think that priorities here are a little wrong. Do I feel for the, the crew of Blizzard making the ones who are actually making with their hands this video game sure i'm sure it's disappointing i'm sure there's a lot of really not great stuff going on right now with all the shaking up that's going on at that company all i'm gonna say diablo 4 better do numbers dude it better be amazing it's got to turn this ship around because if if not that game then i don't know what's going to i heard dragonflight as an expansion for wow is pretty good i hope that's true vanilla is pretty cool they are really running low on their 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 trust tokens that they've built up trust it's a hard thing to earn and an easy thing to lose you can build up that trust as a company with your product with your quality of work for 20 plus years making great amazing stuff consistently perfectly every single time but you slip up for just a few years straight and all of a sudden dude you're in the same category as like fucking ubisoft be careful, guys. Be careful, Blizzard. Microsoft, I don't know what the fuck you're inheriting at this point. I'm sure there's going to be some shaking up if that acquisition goes through. It looks like Blizzard really needs some new direction, some new leadership, and I hope that can happen. Either way, my thoughts are with you guys out there in the trenches trying to make Overwatch 2 a good, worthwhile game. Only time will tell. I hope the PvE stuff is going to be good. I hope it's going to be great. And if it is, I'll play it. I'll be the first one to admit that it's good and great. And I'm eating my words. And we all should shut the fuck up. I'll be the first one to admit it. Keep a critical thinking cap on at all times when dealing with the AAA gaming industry. Because you never know when they're just trying to take advantage of your trust and of your wallet. If they're really going to deliver on those grandiose promises that they're making at these showcases and in these interviews. Be very careful where you spend your money. And when you do, be sure it's the right and the safe bet or you just might end up wasting 60, 70, 100 dollars. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you're 
no longer excited for Overwatch 2 or its PvE modes, or if you're still going to play it and you don't care, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Very close to a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all your support thus far, and we'll see you on the next one.